Hello there, my name is Douglas Rumbaugh, and in this video I want to talk about a feature of the apt package manager, which is the package manager used by Debian and its derivatives, Ubuntu, Linux Mint, Pop! OS, that sort of thing, that I've recently discovered and has really changed the way that I look at these distributions. So these distributions, Ubuntu and Debian, are distributions that have sort of a poor reputation, I would say, amongst the hardcore casual users of Linux. So the, the Gen 2 and Arch Linux crowd. Um, not to say anything negative about Gen 2 and Arch Linux, I used Arch Linux for years. Um, but one of the reasons why these distributions are looked upon negatively is because they use a point release model. And what that means is that Canonical will release a version of Ubuntu every six months, and you don't have particularly aggressive updates of the packages between releases of the software. Now, this can cause problems with certain packages in particular. As an example, um, YTDLP is a program which can be used to download videos off of the internet. Um, and in particular, the most common use case is that it interfaces with the YouTube API in order to download and stream YouTube videos. This is the back end for most of the desktop video clients which stream YouTube. Now, this particular box that I'm using is running Ubuntu 22.04 LTS. And as you can see, it's running a very old version of this program. And if you're running an LTS release of Ubuntu, which you may be on your server or you may be required to by IT at the place that you work or something like that, uh, this is going to be really annoying because YouTube changes its API. And when it does, applications which use its API need to update as well. So if we go ahead and try and use this to download one of my YouTube videos, we'll see very quickly that it errors out. And the reason why it errors out is because YouTube changed the API. YTDLP has been fixed in order to work with the updated YouTube API. However, because I'm running an LTS version of Ubuntu, I do not have access to the updated version of this package in my repository. So first things first, let me just run an upgrade. I already updated, but we'll just run an upgrade and verify that my system is fully up to date. This is as up to date as it's gonna get. And from here, we will look at how I can install newer versions of this package. So you're gonna to wanna to go into Etsy apt and inside of here are a couple of files which we need, actually two in particular. We're going to be manipulating the sources.list file, which is the configuration file that apt uses to locate repositories. And we're going to be creating and updating a preferences file, which is what we're going to use to tell apt which repositories to install software from. We'll begin with the sources. Now I've already copied and pasted this line in here, but what we're gonna do is we are going to add the repositories for Ubuntu's upcoming 23.04 Lunar Lobster. And so if you've never seen this file before, it's, it's just simply a list of the package archives that apt is going to use to download the packages from. So 22.04 is Jammy Jellyfish. The package archives are named by the animal code name of the release. So Jammy, this Jammy stuff here is the 22.04. And you can see there's a, there's a Jammy, there's Jammy updates, there's Jammy security, uh, there's Jammy backports, which is disabled right now, which technically would fix our problem, but don't look at the man behind the curtain. And here we are adding the new one, which is Lunar. So just copy this line. It's actually identical to any of these other ones. It's just that Jammy has been replaced with Lunar. Now, when we add that line, that's going to add Lunar Lobster's repositories as targets for installing packages. So once you do that, you're going to have to run an apt update, which is going to pull it in and make the configuration updates. And then once this is finished, we can run apt cache policy in order to take a look at all of the repositories that are configured as well as their priorities. So if we take a look here, you can see all of the GME Jellyfish repositories and they have 
Priority 500. And if we scroll up, you can see here are the Lunar Lobster repositories that are available to us now as well, and they also have a priority of 500. Now doing this and stopping here is going to actually cause a bit of a problem because the way that apt works when it's selecting repositories from which to download packages is it first picks the picks one by priority and then if there's a tie at the priority level that it picks it installs from the repository with the newest version so what that means is that if we look here right now all of our repositories including the lunar ones have a priority of 500. So if I try and run an up, just a flat upgrade, what's going to happen is it is going to attempt to upgrade pretty much everything on my system with the Lunar Lobster versions, which is not at all what we want. For whatever reason, I have decided that I want to remain on 22.04, but I would like this one particular package to be coming from the Lunar Lobster repositories so that I get the newer version. So we're going to not run that upgrade. Now, in order to set the priority for the repositories, we're going to have to create an apt preferences file. So just within Etsy apt, you're going to want to create a file called preferences. and use a text editor that you have installed. <laughs> that always helps. Uh, okay, and then the way that this is going to work is you want to format it like this. Okay, so this is the first entry that I've added, which is the standard one for Jammy. Now, what this composes of is three different things. Is the first line is specifying what packages that I'm talking about. And the asterisk, of course, means all of them. You can use this, this is why it's called package pinning, is you can use this to pin specific packages to specific versions and repositories. Now here, we're just using it in a very simple manner to control which repositories we install from. So we're going to use an asterisk to talk about everything. But in principle, you can do this at a package level, not at a full-blown repository level. The next line, the pin colon, is going to specify what repositories we're talking about. So I said n equals jammy right here. Now, if we close out of this for a second and I go back to that apt cache policy output, if we look at the repositories that get spit out, uh, first you'll notice that the jammy stuff is now at 700 instead of 500, so it works. Uh, but right here, this is the line that we're specifying when we do that pin. So it's pin colon release, and then we can specify V for version, O for origin, A for archive, N for name, B's architecture, I think. So there's a bunch of different flags here that we can set. Now I'm using N equals jammy. This is a fairly broad one. So it's going to refer to the 22.04 jammy, jammy repositories. Now if I had said A equals jammy, this one's more specific. So when I say A equals Jammy, I'm referring just to the main Jammy repository and you know multiverse, universe, restricted, that sort of thing. Um, however, you also have Jammy updates, Jammy backports, Jammy security. There's a couple of other repositories that are associated with a given version of Ubuntu. So by saying N equals Jammy, I'm catching all of them. So N equals Jammy catches the updates repository, the main repository, the security repository, it would also catch the backports repository if I had it and gives all of those a priority of 700. And again, remember when you have multiple repositories at the same priority, the newest package wins. So that's kind of the behavior that you want. Uh, and now our, our lunar stuff is now sitting still at the default of 500. I'm going to go ahead and add some, add a specific preferences list for that too, though. So that's going to be the same thing. However, I'm going to actually give it a negative priority. Now the pin priorities are actually a little bit complicated because it isn't simply a case of higher number wins. There's actually some nuance to the interpretations of priorities at different numerical ranges. 
So if you do man apt underscore preferences, this is the apt preferences manual page. And in here, it gives you a list of the priorities and what they mean um, right here, how apt interprets priorities. So if we look at these different priorities, uh, the first priority class is greater than or equal to 1000, which is going to cause a version to be installed even if it results in a downgrade. You usually don't want this, although we're going to use it at the very end of this video to show you how you can roll all this stuff back if you decide you don't want to do it anymore. Uh, the next one down is going to even override target releases, which we're going to talk about once we're done with this segment of the video. It's how you specify what repository you're installing something from manually. So if you have a repository that's priority is between 990 and 1000, apt will ignore you specifying where you want it to come from and it will come from there instead. So be careful with that. 500 to 990 behaves the way that you would expect. Um, 100 to 500 has some slight caveats there that you can read. Again, for zero to 100, uh, the thing that we care about though is less than zero, negative, which is going to never install from that repository. So by giving Lunar Lobster a priority of negative 10, we're ensuring that apt never tries to install anything from it, which is going to guarantee that we don't accidentally update something that we didn't mean to update. Now that we've set that those pin priorities up, and we can verify that again with the apt cache policy, you can see that the, the lunar stuff is now at negative 10. Now if I try and run an update, or upgrade rather, um, it's no longer going to try and install 700 odd updates because we're now looking again only at Jammy. It's not going to try and pull things in from Lunar Lobster. So now that we have that set up, we can use apt to install specific programs from the Lunar Lobster repository. And this is where it gets really useful. So what I can do is I can do a sudo apt install and then say tac t lunar, and this is repository targeting. So right now I am saying, go to the Lunar Lobster repositories and try to install this thing. Now, if you have a repository that is pinned with one of those priorities between 990 and 1000, then that will override this. But other than that, this will override all the other pin priorities. So even though lunar is a negative 10 and should never be installed from, this will still install it, and we can install YTDLP like that. And now, before I run that, let me just demonstrate this. Right now, we're running on 2022.04.08. If I do this, it's going to prompt me to install it, or won't, and we'll just install it. And you'll see how it's now upgrading the package. So now, if I check the version, it is now running in 2023.02.17, which is a version that has been updated so that it actually will work now. And we can we can download the stuff. Now I actually am not in um, not in a directory I have write access to, uh, but if I fix that, there you go. It's now downloading the video just fine. So that's how you can install packages from newer versions of Ubuntu without actually updating which is quite convenient because in the lead up to the release of a new Ubuntu version, the packages in that upcoming version are usually kept pretty much rolling release. And the same thing goes for Debian. If you're running Debian, then you would use SID instead of Lunar in this case, or you could also just call it unstable. And then that's basically a rolling release repository from which you can install specific packages which means that you get all the benefits of having a stable base, be it an Ubuntu LTS or just a Debian stable core system. And then you can selectively install packages from the rolling release stuff where necessary, like with this YTTLP example. Now there is an important caveat to this. Uh, let me install, oh, I don't know, um, LuaKit. So we're gonna install Lu LuaKit from the Lunar repository. Now, unlike YTDLP, which has no dependencies, this package has dependencies. And this is where you can get bitten if you aren't careful. Because 
depending upon the versions of these packages that are required by Lua Kit, or whatever packages it is that you're installing, some of them may have to get pulled from Lunar as well. Now, that's not too big of a deal right now, but what can sometimes happen is if you install a package from the, the unstable repository or the, the newer repositories that you're not using for the main system, and that pulls in an updated version of some dependency, some library, whatever the case may be, that's going to require every other package that you have installed to work with that updated dependency. Now, often this will be okay because a lot of dependencies are phrased as, you know, version greater than 1.x.x. Um, however, if you're in a situation where the dependency that you have pulled down is a version 2.x.x and the package that you have requires 1.x.x, what's going to happen is Apt is going to take that package and update it to Lunar as well so that it can satisfy that dependency. So what can happen then later is if you try and install a package from your base repository, so say Jammy, and it's relying on version 1. whatever of that library, but you have installed version 2. whatever from Lunar, Apt will actually fail. It won't install the package because it can't satisfy the dependency without downgrading. If that should happen, all you have to do is install that particular package that you wanted from the Lunar repository instead by targeting Lunar. Now, depending on what it is that you're installing, this can mean that you may end up pulling a good chunk of your system up to the unstable system, up to Lunar or up to Debian SID or whatever the case may be. So you do have to be aware of dependencies. Sometimes things don't work quite as nicely as you would hope. Right. So if you decide after having done some of this that actually you're you're not a big fan of this whole running multiple different releases at the same time kind of thing. Uh, you can have apt roll everything back to your your base release. And to do that, that's what you can use those pin priorities of greater than 1000 for. Now you do want to be a little bit careful with this uh, because this is going to cause all of your Lunar Lobster packages to get downgraded back to Jammy or, you know, whatever pair of releases you happen to be using in whatever time period you have to be watching this video. And you do want to be careful with that because downgrades can sometimes mess things up. Um, however, if you do want to give it a shot, understanding that there are some risks that are involved, all you have to do is go back to this preferences file and change the pin priority for Jammy to be greater than 1000, like that. You can you can leave Lunar in there, doesn't matter, Just Jammy just has to be greater than 1000. And now, if we run our apt upgrade, you'll see we have a whole bunch of packages that are about to be downgraded. So these are gonna be all of the Lunar Lobster packages. So if we just say yes, then we are going to go ahead and pull all those back down to the jammy versions and having done that we're now back on jammy so if i do a ytdlp version we should be back in that uh april 2020 version and so that's really all there is to the the basics of this apt pending of course really exists as a tool for servers and systems administrators so that they can lock in particular versions of particular servers or add vendor specific repositories and control what comes from where. But as you can see here with this YouTube DLP case, it does have a lot of utility on the desktop as well. We can use it to pull in specific up-to-date fresh packages without having to commit our entire system to being rolling release like you would if you were running Arch or straight Debian Unstable or something like that. I use it quite a lot for this sort of thing now, particularly because I'm stuck at work using Ubuntu LTS releases, and so it's really the only option that I have for some things like this. As always, I hope that you found this video interesting and useful, and 
I'll see you in the next one.